Hi, I'm Minister Thomasina Lawrence, and I'm coming to talk to you today about healing. Healing belongs to you. It's God's will for you, and I'm here to take you through a step-by-step -step journey on how to take it from the spirit realm, apply it to your life, and receive the full manifestation. I can't take credit for it because it doesn't belong to me. It's the Word of God. So first I'd like to say welcome, and I trust that you will receive from these teachings. Well, normally I go to the hospital to visit the sick. And when I go to the hospital to visit the sick, all my, on my way there I'm praying, speaking in tongues, so God can use me as a voice piece when I arrive. He says we're working together with him and that it's our responsibility to do the works that Jesus did because he's already spoken our destination. Greater works than these shall you do. That lets us know that the works that Jesus did were astronomical works, but we're gonna do greater works. And we understand right now it's harvest time. But in order for us to function in this earth realm, we need to be healed from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. So there's some promises. And number one, God's medicine. God's word is health to your flesh. He watches over the word to perform it in your life. So I'd like to uh, confess the word of a few songs to you. And I believe that as I speak these uh, words, God will give you the melody and you'll be able to speak them as well. It says, Father, your words, they say that the battle is not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and rulers of this dark age. You have designed and ordained armor and weapons for us to come against the wickedness in high places. Right now, we put on the whole armor of God. We put on the helmet of salvation. We lift up the shield of faith. We clothe ourselves in the breastplate of righteousness, and we pick up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and we quench every fiery dart in the mighty and majestic name of Jesus. We declare war on the heavenlies. The battle is not yours. It's in the mind. It's the mind, the arena of faith, where this warfare takes place. It's not a physical battle where you use a knife or a gun, but it is a battle that's spoken in the spirit realm. You speak it, and these words come out of your mouth, and they take place in this earth realm. You can't see it, but they accomplish because they're God's words. And when you speak them, someone hears them, and then God watches over those words to perform it in the believer's mouth and into the believer's life. And then there's another song and it says, how will we know that God is going to return? Is it just a story? Have I been hearing this for a long time? Jesus is coming back to get his church. How will we know? And let me tell you what the Bible says. And right now we're in the times of signs and wonders showing this is in the scripture. This is division. Only thing that hasn't happened is the Antichrist hasn't been identified, but he will. But this is how you're going to know that Christ comes back. It says the sky will unfold. It's going to open up, preparing his entrance. And the clouds are going to begin to applaud with thunder and praise, thunder and praise. The sweet light in his eyes shall enhance us who are waiting and we shall behold him face to face. And when that happens, it's going to be quick. It's just going to be like, and it's there. And when we behold him face to face, all of his glory we'll see. And we will see our savior face to face. Now that's how we're going to know he's here, but that's not the time to receive him. You have to receive him before then or you won't experience what we just told you. So the foundation that I want to lay for receiving your health, your health is God's medicine and it's found in Proverbs 4, 20 and 23. And following me reading this scripture, I'm going to read the rest to you. And I want you to not be moved by the camera or by what I look like. I just want you to supernaturally say, God, my ear gates are open. I'm going to listen. 
As a matter of fact, I'm going to go get my Bible. So when she reads the scripture, I'm going to try to find it. And if she goes too fast, I'm just going to write the scripture down because these are words that's going to restore you if you're sick, protect you if you're in health, and help you help somebody else who may be in need. So it tells us in Proverbs 4, chapter 4, 20, verse 20, 21, 22, and 23. My son, it starts off saying, now remember when God speaks to us, he's speaking from his word. We're humanity. We're not male or female. So don't get upset if it says my son or my daughter. We're his creation. My son, attend to my words and climb your ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Why? For their life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence. Why? For out of it comes the issues of life. This is God's prescription for your life and for your health. This is the capsules that you should take every day. And you may say, why do I have to read this? Because this is God talking to you. And if someone's bleeding, you'll be like, someone's bleeding. I need help. There's a scripture for that. Ezekiel 16, 6. As I walked by thee and saw thee polluted in thine own blood, I said, live, live in thine own blood. Just quoting the scripture mixed with your faith, which is what you have to have to please God will cause that blood to dry up. It doesn't matter if it's menstrual bleeding, not stop your cycle, but something abnormal. If you cut yourself in this bleeding, or if you hear someone that has a problem, the word is Ezekiel 16, 6. As I walked by thee and saw thee polluted in thine own blood, I said, live, live in thine own blood. Now here we go with our scriptures. You have to have a foundation of just knowing the word of God. So you must know these things. These are just basic principles that you as the believer must know because the enemy who walks around like a roaring lion, he's coming for you. He's coming for your mind. If he doesn't believe that you have enough word of God in your spirit room, he's going to attack your soul. He's going to attack your emotions. He's going to try to get you distracted. It's like a bumblebee being stings. If you don't pull that stinger out right away, Oh, that, that bumblebee bite, it's going to grow, it's going to swell, it's going to get red, and it's going to get itch, and you want to scratch it. But as soon as the enemy shoots his dart, you shoot right back, and it plugs it right out. You shoot back with the Word of God. So first of all, you have to know that you're saved if you're not, that it's a gift of God. If you are, it's a gift of God. If you're not, it's a gift he wants to give you. So the Bible tells us in Ephesians verse 2, chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith. This is a gift of God, lest any man should boast. So I can't sell you salvation. The person down the street can't. A priest can't. A pastor can't. It's a gift from God, and it's from him to you, and no one can intercept it. You're in control whether or not you receive the gift. And then it says, heavens declare the glory of God in Romans chapter 1, verse 17. And the firmament shows his handiwork, for therein is the righteous of God revealed from faith to faith, and is, is, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. You're God's handiwork. You're his, he's crafted you and molded you, and he's waiting on you to begin to deposit the word on the inside of you so that you know what your assignment is. Galatians 3.11 says, No man is justified by the law, in the sight of God. It is evident, for the just shall live by faith. So now, this is your key. This is what you have as your stepping stool. We need money to buy things. For God and the kingdom of God and for the benefits, we need faith. Without it, we can't please him. That is your heavenly currency that operates in the earth realm. We can operate in earth. We can operate in the spirit realm. We have authority and dominion and power to call things out of the spirit realm into the earth realm to impact 
whatever situation is. But before we can do it, number one, we have to know the word of God. Number two, we have to believe it. And number three, we have to be fully persuaded that if we're going to speak it, it is going to manifest correctly because we've been given that authority, that dominion and that power. But if you have not hidden the word of God inside of you, then it's not going to come out. It cannot produce. It will not cause you to be effective. Remember, we're laying the foundation so that you're fully equipped to be a walking epistle, speaking the word of God for healing to whoever has an ear to hear and whoever needs to hear the word of God in healing. So number one, you have to receive your salvation. Number two, you receive it as a gift. Number three, you have to know it's the word of God and it's true. And number four, you have to know who you are. Then you have to hide his word in your heart. So when God's ready to use you out of your belly, it's going to flow. Then it tells us in 2 Corinthians 5, 6, therefore, we are always confident. Confident of what? Knowing that while we're at home in the body, we're absent from the Lord. That addresses a number of issues. But while we're in this body, we're absent from the Lord. So that means we must be on assignment for him. And then it tells us how we're going to have to walk while we're on assignment. Jesus came to this earth. He walked this earth. He was found with no guile in his mouth. He healed the blind man. He healed the lame man. He healed the leopard. He caused the woman with the issue of blood to be healed. And he didn't even do anything. It was just his presence. The woman had faith to hear, oh, he's coming to town. She knew the word. She knew he was powerful. She said within herself, if I can get to him, I know I'll be made whole. So then there she is set with a, a group of circumstances. I'm a woman. I'm bleeding. Everybody knows I'm bleeding. I'm not supposed to go outside while I'm bleeding. But she didn't listen to her head. She listened to her spirit. She said, but if I can get to him, I'll be made whole. So what did she do? She took the risk of being stoned by being caught outside. She took the risk by bringing attention to herself, by pressing through the crowd. Because she didn't care if they recognized her at this point. Because she was on a mission. She knew he was there. She knew if she touched him that she would receive her healing. So she had left all the circumstances behind. She got down in the crowd because she couldn't get to him. And then she got down low. And all she could do is stretch out and touch the hem of his garment. And immediately at the point of contact, at her destination, she spoke it from home. If I could just get to him. And if I could touch his garment, I will be made whole. Not maybe, I will be. She did whatever she had to do to get to her destination. And at her destination was the intersection of her victory. Jesus turned around swiftly. He knew. And he said with his mouth to his disciples who touched me. And the disciples, you know, figuring, what do you mean? Look at this crowd, all these people around. What do you mean, Master, who touch you? Because Jesus knew that virtue, that the healing power had gone out of him. And now here this woman is faced again with another decision. Does she cower down and become a liar in the crowd and run off with her healing? Or does she stand up with a courageous courage and say, it was me, Master? She took the courageous courage route. And she stood up and she called him master and identified that she was the one that touched him. And then he said something. He didn't say be made whole. He said, go your way. Why? Because your faith has made you whole. And that's what we need as believers. We need to know that if we could just get to the word of God, confess the word of God, speak the word of God, proclaim it that the rest is left up to God. But a lot of times we are so close to the circumstances. You got to bite the circumstances a piece at a time, like an elephant. Just bite it with the scripture. Bite it with, by Jesus stripes I'm healed. 
Bite it with no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Bite it with I stagger not at the promises of God through unbelief, but I'm strong in faith like Abraham giving glory to God. You bite it until it's gone. You take these scriptures as medicine. They are health to your flesh. You digest them by confessing the word of God. Three times a day, five times a day. You have plenty of time, especially if you're at home waiting to get better. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to eat these scriptures. Therefore, I'm confident knowing this, that while I'm at home in the body, I'm absent from the Father, so there must be some work for me to do. Because when I reach my destination in heaven, that's another assignment. Right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk by faith. I'm going to walk by, not by sight. I'm going to deposit the word of God on the inside of me. And then Timothy tells us in 1 Timothy 6:12 how we're supposed to do it. Fight the good fight of faith. How? Lay hold of eternal life. How? Which you're also called and have confessed the good confessions in the presence of many witnesses. You speak that word. You confess that word to people you don't know. How are you doing today? I'm blessed of the Lord. How are you doing today? I'm healed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. How are you doing today? The word of God he sent his word and healed me and delivered me from my destruction. How are you doing today? As I walked by thee, Jesus told me and saw you, Thomasina, polluted in your own blood. I said, live, live in thine own blood. So I am quoting the word of God. I'm eating the sickness mountain a piece at a time. And when you do that, God says, hide my word in your heart so that I may perform it in those that believe it. And that's what we do. Healing is laying the foundation. You do not have to be sick to begin to lay this foundation. You want to lay the foundation. You want to continue to teach your kids the foundation. You want to speak it. Post it up in your house. Post it on the refrigerator. Put it in the restroom. When you get in your car, when you turn on your favorite song, have a scripture there. You feed yourself with the word of God while you do not need it. And then you'll be able to say, like 2 Timothy 4 says, I have fought the good fight. So you see, even though you're in a fight, it's still a good fight. I have finished the race. You're going to finish the race. I have kept the faith. And that is God's desire for us. Fight, win, and receive your reward. Romans 11:20 says, Because of unbelief, they were broken off. And you stand by faith. Do not be haughty, but fear God. So when those who were in unbelief did not receive, just because you walk in faith, do not get all haughty. I believe God. I know how to believe God. Because God is watching. He's everywhere. He's the all-seeing, no all-seeing God. And he wants you to walk as imitators of Christ. So as you're dispensing this word of God to the believer, you have a mandate by God and how to connect, how to connect yourself. And in Ephesians 6.16, it says, this is what he's going to do for you. He's going to grant you according to the riches of his glory. So now we've left whatever earth has to offer because what earth has to offer is secondhand. He's going to offer you the riches of his glory to be strengthened and might through the spirit in the inner man. So as you begin to confess that word and put it inside of you, he's going to strengthen you. And Ephesians 6, 17 says that you're supposed to put that armor on. Now the armor that's described in Ephesians chapter 6 is military armor. But that's not necessarily what God is talking about. He's talking about the helmet of salvation. Protect what's in your mind. He's talking about the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Keep it with you, not in your hand, but in your heart, so that when you need to get to it, it comes out of your belly. And then he's talking about having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. Be careful where you go. Step in righteousness. And then he says, Gird your loins about with truth. 
That's protect yourself. Have no compromise on the inside of you. Have a life of integrity. And then he says, the breastplate of righteousness. Cover yourself with God's word. And as you put this armor on, you keep it on. You can walk into the depths of where the enemy is. And the Bible says, no dart will penetrate the shield that you have. It will quench every fiery dart. So in Ephesians, we have the armor. In Galatians, we have the promise. You've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Sickness does not have a right. If sickness is in your body, it's in there illegally and you need to evict it. How do you evict it? You say, God, there's an invader here. Heaven, host, Holy Spirit, I'm about to do an eviction. And I call you out of the spirit realm to back me up. In the name of Jesus, you foul spirit of sickness, I command you to flee and leave my body. I've been bought with the blood of Jesus. I've been bought and my Savior has paid the price. You do not have a right to reside in my body. Now, I know that sounds a little bit different, but I'm going to tell you it works. When I first got saved, I owned a house and I was having a problem. I was in foreclosure. I did not know what to do. I was a babe in Christ. And I was listening to Gloria Copeland. And Gloria Copeland said, the devil tried to steal me and Ken's house. But you know what God told me to do? He told me to open my front door and put foreclosure out. I literally took her for, took her at her word. I went to my front door and I opened that front door. I said, you foul spirit of foreclosure, get out of my house in the name of Jesus. That house didn't get foreclosed on. And that's what you can do for your healing. The same scriptures for healing or for prosperity because they're all from God. So you must identify the enemy. Oh, there's an invader in my house, which is your body. He's trying to give me a headache. He's trying to cause me to bleed. He's telling me that I have cancer. If somebody's telling you something, they're on the outside trying to get inside. But if you have the word on the inside of you, as soon as that invader comes, that word is going to come out and just choke them. You have to do what the doctor tells you to do. Take your godly capsules, which is the word. Take the medication that the doctor performed. Stand on the word of the living God and watch God perform it in your life. Know that God loves you. It's his will and desire that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. You've been bought with the blood of Jesus. He gave his life. And at that very same time, he gave you total healing. It's yours. Take it. But you have to have faith to do it. The faith that takes will produce positive healing power in your body. I'm Thomasina Lawrence, and I thank you. And I believe that these words are sealed in your heart. And you'll begin to eat them, swallow them, and they will produce after their own kind. In the name of Jesus, amen.